Okay, our last key data type that you use quite often when you're building up other data types is this thing called java.time.instant. Now this one's fairly new on the history of Java. They had various ways of telling time, uh, but this one is the one, kind of the winner, the final best way to represent time. So that's the only one I'm going to talk about. This java.time.instant uh, is literally a point in time. So when you think about as you're going through life and you're writing code, uh, many times you want to take a point in time. Uh, the time is based on the Earth's full revolution around the axis. So, uh, you know, we're 24 hours equals 24 hours times 60 minutes per hour times 60 seconds per minute. So that's basically where we, we get that from. And, and that means we have 86,400 seconds in a day. So uh, you have the epoch, which on Java and also Linux is uh, January 1st, 1970. Now, it's kind of interesting. Notice the java.time.instance.min uh, is billions of years before this epoch. <laughs> and the java.time instant max is the year, well, that's a pretty big year. So my point being, I don't think you have to worry about this java.time.instant uh, being not what you need for any type of program you may ever, ever write. Uh, both of the you can go way, way back in time, and you can go way, way ahead in time. So uh, the java.time.instant.now, that's probably one of the most common ones you'll do. And the dot now, the bullet there at the bottom, is this current point in time. All right, so the current point in time. So here's an example of doing that. We see that at line number four, I'm going to have a variable called start, which is going to be an instant. And at line number five, what I assign start to is java.time.instant.now. So that's going to grab it right then. And at line number six, notice I can, I can dis display that. The default output is actually very, very useful. It's this standard format that shows the date and the time. So that's pretty cool how it shows the date and the time in this, this very uh, well-defined format. Now, at line number eight, I do a try and a catch. And the reason I have to do that is I'm going to tell my thread to go to sleep. So at line number nine, java.lang.thread.sleep, I say sleep for one second. So the idea is we're going to get our start time we we'll go sleep for a second, and again, you have to put the sleep within the try and the catch because the sleep could be interrupted. And if it was interrupted, you need to, to handle that, like shown on 11, 12, and 13. Anyway, we sleep for a second, and then at line 15, we're going to have another variable called end, and notice at line 16, say end equals Java dot time dot instant dot now. So basically I'm taking a time stamp again of this particular instant. And then at line 17, notice I show the end. So you can see very clearly we started and we ended. And when you look at the second value, notice the, the, uh, the of course the date stays the same. And if you look at the time, notice the, uh, the, the 11 went to 12. So basically we went from the 11 second to the 12 second uh, because we, we waited for a, a second. Okay, well speaking of waiting, sometimes you want to know the duration. And so this java.time.duration is the difference between two java.time.instance. Now we just showed uh, we showed printing it out, we saw that there was a difference between that second. But what's nice about this, you can give it a duration, so the java.time.duration.between, 
and you can give it a start and an end, and then you can ask, how, wh how do you want to show that duration? Do you want to show it in nanoseconds or milliseconds or seconds or minutes or hours or days? So this is a handy way to show the duration. And, and as you can imagine, when we're studying data structures, there'll be times where you're wanting to run performance measurements and seeing how long it takes to do something. Well, this is a great way to take a timestamp before, timestamp after, and then do this uh, java.timeduration.between and see the duration between two points. So here, doing the same exercise we had just a while ago, uh, where we take the uh, time where we start and we end, now we show the duration. So notice at line 20, java.time.duration.between, and I give the start and the end. And we saw the start and the end from the previous uh, demonstration. So at line 21, I just print out the default duration to see how it shows the, the default output, which is not really too interesting. What's more interesting, though, is at line 22, notice I can show the nanoseconds duration, or I can show the milliseconds duration, or the one that we're most interested in for this, this example is line 24, the seconds, the two seconds, and we see, sure enough, one second passed. And then as far as 25, saying two hours or two days, well, we didn't have any duration related to hours and days, so those were zero. But you can see the convenience of this, that you could have two points in time that are, are apart in hours or apart in days, and it would clearly show you that uh, duration. So in summary, we've seen the fundamental data types. Uh, we've seen the Boolean that gives us a true-false. We've seen the character for a single character. We've seen numbers, both integer numbers, that is the byte, the short, the integer, and the long. We've seen the floating point numbers, both the float and the double. We've seen strings, and we've seen the date time, which for us, the java.time.instant. These fundamental data types will be the building blocks for all the other data types that we use. In fact, um, many of the, the data structures that we look at, when we look inside the data structure, whether it's an array, or whether it's a queue, or whether it's a tree, we'll find the, the data that's inside of those is often these fundamental data types. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.